This next tutorial will cover the heart and specifically the innervation of the heart. Well, the heart's innervated by both sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. And let's start with first the sympathetic nervous system. And so to do the sympathetic nervous system, here's a, the whole CNS. We're going to focus down a little bit more on the area of the CNS that will do the heart. So the sympathetic innervation is going to increase heart rate and it's also going to increase the force of contraction of the heart. And as with all sympathetic innervation arises between the T1, L2 spinal cord levels and with the heart it's specifically T1 to T1. T4, sometimes T5 as well. For simplicity, I'll just use T1 to T4. The preganglionic sympathetic neuron arises in the lateral horn gray matter, sends its axon out the ventral root, ventral ramus, into the white ramus communicons, where it synapses with a postganglionic sympathetic neuron within the sympathetic chain. Now, the postganglionic sympathetic neuron goes right out of that chain, the ganglion, directly to the cardiac plexus and to the heart to innervate it. And the same thing happens at each of these levels from T1 to T4. And we're going to send off and innervate the heart. We call these thoracic sympathetic cardiac nerves, also known as cardiopulmonary splanchnic nerves. Um, and these were going to come off right off that sympathetic chain. But because the heart arises so high up in the embryo, up in the neck region, there's also cervical parts of the chain that innervate the heart. But just because it comes from the cervical ganglion, we have to remember that all sympathetics come from T1 to, to um, L2. And so in the T1 to T4 levels, that preganglionic sympathetic neuron enters the sympathetic chain, ascends up, in this case, the superior cervical ganglion, synapses, and then the postganglionic sympathetic neuron goes off to the heart. And this is a cervical sympathetic cardiac nerve. And if we say one from the T2 level, another one ascends up to the middle uh, cervical ganglion, synapses and sends off a neuron, and that's also a cervical sympathetic cardiac nerve. And so here we have um, T1 to T4 all send preganglionic sympathetics up the chain to the superior, middle, and inferior um, cervical ganglia. And there we now have with both cervical sympathetic cardiac nerves and thoracic sympathetic cardiac nerves innervating the heart. So the take-home message is uh, sympathetics arise between the T1 to T4 levels. Sympathetic chain is where the synapse occurs. And then the cervical and thoracic sympathetic nerves will course out to innervate the heart, which will increase heart rate and contraction. So now let's take a look at the parasympathetic innervation of the heart, and its function is to the opposite, decrease heart rate and decreases the force of contraction. All parasympathetics arise between brainstem and sacral cord. Specifically with the heart, it's going to be the medulla oblongata, and that preganglionic parasympathetic neuron arises from the dorsal vagal nucleus, and then the neuron exits out to go to the heart, synapses with this intraneural um, ganglion, and then the postganglionic parasympathetic neuron within the hall of the heart, wall of the heart innervates the cardiac muscle or influences cardiac muscle, I should say. When it comes to parasympathetic innervation of the heart, vagus nerve, vagus nerve. So the take-home message is the medulla is where this impulse for parasympathetics arises. The vagus nerve is the vehicle to take this parasympathetic innervation to the heart, which synapses an intramural ganglion and decreases heart rate and contraction. So, but the heart actually directs its own, has its own uh, self-starting uh, conduction system between the SA node, AV node, bundle of His, bundle branches, and Purkinje fibers. So it's an established way that it sends a unidirectional pathway of cardiac muscle contraction. And so this ensures coordinated contraction of the of the heart muscles. So it's initiated in this SA node. It's a group of impulse generating cardiac muscle cells. They're not so much contractile. And this is the pacemaker. The SA node is the pacemaker because it, it, um, uh, it, it sends this electrical activity to the heart. It's spontaneously generated by the SA node and then propagates this impulse through the right atrium and the left atrium. And this causes uh, a depolarization sweep that goes through the walls that will eventually influence now the AV node, which is another group of impulse generating cells. It's in the inner atrial septum right by the coronary sinus. And it takes the impulses from the SA node and conducts them down to this AV bundle of Hiss. Um, and this is now going to take this impulse through this fibrous skeleton of the heart and then send it down the interventricular septum 
through both the left bundle branch, and this left bundle branch is just going to course down uh, and eventually get to the apex, and then there's a right bundle branch that's going to influence the right side of the heart, and this these impulses go to the Purkinje fibers that, in, that go all throughout the myocardium and the ventricles and ensures the impulse goes from apex and then courses up, ejecting blood from the heart, also influencing those papillary muscles to ensure those AV valves don't slap and prolapse into the uh, atria. So here we have this conduction system of the heart. And so the autonomic nervous system then influences the conduction nervous, the conduction system of the heart. And so the SA node's going anyways all the time. It's the pacemaker. What changes the pace is either vagus nerve tells the SA node to slow down or the sympathetics tell it to speed up. So here's another illustration of many of these structures. There's our sympathetic ganglion, and there's our trunk going up to the superior cervical ganglion. And here's a cardiac splanchnic nerve going right down to this cardiac plexus, which is here, coursing right around the aortic arch. Um, then we also have the vagus nerve here. We don't see it coming from the dulla. It's just down from that area, and we see it coursing down to the neck. It also goes to this cardiac plexus and courses around the aortic arch there. So let's talk about visceral sensory neurons. Uh, visceral sensory neurons are found both on paralleling both parasympathetic and sympathetics, and they go the opposite direction. So if we gray this out, we see parasympathetic, we see a visceral afferent neuron going from the heart, paralleling the vagus nerve, and going to the medulla. This, these neurons help sense changes in blood pressure and blood chemistry, like oxygen and CO2 concentration, and they're dealing primarily with cardiac reflexes, where we have now... Uh, visceral afferents paralleling the sympathetic neurons that's shown in that blue um, as well and happens at the T1 to T4 areas and also in the middle and, and inferior cervical ganglia. These um, are changing uh, are sensing more ischemia and tissue damage, uh, stretching wall, stretching of the heart wall. And so they're more mediating visceral pain with angina pectoris and myocardial infarctions. Um, so what happens when the heart suffers damage, like ischemia due to interruption of arterial blood supply? Well, let's see what occurs here. All right, we're going to put the heart there. We're going to put the dermatomes of the left upper limb. So here we have somatic sensory innervation coming from the T1 to T4 dermatomes and going through the dorsal root to the dorsal horn. Things like pain, temperature, touch, vibration, um, itchiness, things like that. Okay? Now, that information hits the dorsal horn gray matter and then goes up to the brain and the brain says, ah, I hear from you guys all the time. That's Gabe's because you're always getting hot, itchy, taking your shirt on and off, wind blowing against it, so forth. However, now let's take a look at the heart. What happens if the heart actually has ischemic damage demonstrated by that red on the heart? Well, let's now follow those visceral afferent neurons paralleling the sympathetics back to also the dorsal horn gray matter and then sends a message to the brain that says, hey, uh, we're damaged here. We're kind of hurting. Uh, I want to let you know that. We're going to maybe have a heart attack here. We're close to it. That's Ireland. Brain never hears from ischemic damage or rarely hears about ischemic damage from the heart. So what happens then is when we put these two pictures beside each other, when that visceral sensory information from the heart travels to the spinal cord, and then we also have, at that same time, somatic sensory information coming to the same part of the spinal cord, and there they synapse, and those synapses are so close to each other that when those messages go up to the brain, the brain then doesn't really know or can't distinguish if that message is coming from the heart, Ireland, that you never hear from, or from the T1 to T4 dermatomes, Gabriel, which you always hear from. So the brain refers that sensory input to those dermatomes, even though that's not where it's coming from. And this is a dull, diffuse, non-localized pain. That's angina pectoris, referred pain from heart problems. Now, what about um, visceral afferent neurons that parallel the vagus nerve? for parasympathetics. These are, again, are for blood pressure, um, changes in blood pressure and blood chemistry, cardiac reflexes. And since there's no contribution, no associated spinal nerves at this level, you don't have somatic referred pain, but there's oft, sometimes patients will say that they're nauseous or some other thing of that nature. That's the way the brain's referring that type of change. And that's our innervation of the heart.